we have a couple of contractors here and then the dogs may go crazy and then me with technology, but I'm going to do my best, my best here for you. It's a pleasure to be with you. It's a pleasure to be here with you, Matt. Uh, not, not a problem. Understand we have some people working on our roof right now, so you might hear some thuds. Yeah, if it gets noisy, then you'll know. I mean, no one's being assaulted or anything, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one's getting beat over here. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, it's a it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, you're a personal hero of mine. Um, oh, this is a I I really enjoy your work. Uh, your voice is insane, uh, to say the least. Oh, uh, in you. the best way possible. In the best way possible. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. I'm I'm humbled to say the least. Yeah. Um. So just to kind of start off, just to kind of get uh, let everyone know a little bit about you, if you don't mind uh, introducing yourself, kind of uh, what your specialty is, uh, kind of your background a little bit in music. So uh, I'll give you sure. the floor. Um. Well, I. So we'll go way back. At about the age of 13, I believe it was, my voice dropped. And um, I mean, big time dropped. Like I was a, a boy soprano, like I've heard Glenn Miller and other people talk about, you know, I mean, I had a really, really high voice. So like in the, um, in the church I was in, we'd have cantatas and I always did the, you know, the very, very highest part. And it was literally like overnight. I mean, I, I went, you know, came down the stairs and talked to my mom and dad and I was like, good morning. And, you know, they were like, well, so yeah, it was really, um, and I actually don't speak nearly as, as low. I don't know why that is. My voice has, has come up some as far as my speaking voice, but it was a very dramatic shift. Um, so I spent a long time not even singing because, you know, my voice would break. I mean, I, middle C was like a, a no-go, you know, I couldn't even reach a middle C. So, um, I started doing some stuff in the local choir, um, both in my uh, church, because my uncles had really encouraged me to, to sing. So I started singing bass. And uh, then in the, uh, in the junior high and high school choirs, um, I started doing some things there. Didn't really pursue it real seriously, um, but I had fun doing it. And my biggest inspiration at that time, I really didn't have any exposure to um, some of the genres such as, you know, we enjoy the choral stuff and like, and also when you hear the awesome Russian activist and, um, uh, and the Vespers and all that stuff, you know, it's just like, wow. Um, so I had not been exposed to that, but I, uh, I would go to almost every single, uh, Southern gospel sing. And I mean, I would drive States away sometimes. I mean, so the cathedrals, Gold City, you know, and it was really great to get to spend time talking with George Yance, um, Tim Riley, J.D. Sumner, all those people that I really, you know, admired and looked up to and had these just insanely low voices. You know, I mean, when when you're a young kid and for the first time you hear someone go down to like an, an F1, you know, it just it like knocks your hair out. You know, you're like, I didn't know that that was possible. And um, so, yeah, I started doing some uh, some quartet singing, some acapella stuff. Um, and then I stopped for quite a while and I didn't become active again until, uh, well past the age of 40 when I, um, got back on social media, I got involved in, uh, activism, astronomy, coral. I'm sure you're familiar with that on Facebook. Um, Axel Fajal has done a, an amazing job putting that together. Um, and there's some really just incredible, um, knowledgeable people there, um, from all walks. And uh, then I started kind of dabbling in the, you know, YouTube, TikTok, thing like that. So I've become the tiktok I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Does that kind yeah. of answer your question? Yeah, very, okay, very much great. so. Um, I actually found you on TikTok. That's how I first started kind of okay. learning who you were. Um, yeah. And then I got added to the basement. Yeah, um, yeah. Don't, yeah, that, that um it's kind of sad. I don't, that group, I don't, I don't see that around too much anymore. Um, and I'm sure it's going to be kind of what we're talking about today. Yeah. Um, so, so for everybody else, uh, this is actually kind of the first time Matt and I are actually like semi face to face talking. We've been, we've been messaging right. for quite a while. Um, and, uh, he's been gracious enough to, uh, to give us his time. So that way we can talk about some pretty, pretty important things. At least I feel like it's important. Um, one of the things that I've noticed 
in the base community is we seem to always be there for each other until it comes to comparing people. Um, and like, first of all, I want to state, I'm kind of tired of the, uh, the point of view that if you are not projecting a G one over everybody that you can't call yourself a base. Um, right. If we if we look back, I mean, we look back when Johnny Cash did Folsom Prison Blues, and he went down to an E two, and everyone lost their mind. Um, right. Yeah. And and I and I do think social media has some to do with that. Now it's more readily available. We can go find people like like you and like George Yance, Tim Riley, that can just bring out these these crazy low notes that most of us. I mean, I can't uh, do those kinds of notes. Um, but I would still consider myself a base. Yeah, um, absolutely. Like t- uh, the I don't I'm I don't know if you've seen it the uh, the base gang uh, Misty Mountains video that they put yes. out. Yes. I think that video is fantastic because it shows so many different kinds of bases. Um, literally, just in the first thirty seconds, you hear Bobby, then you go to Luke, and then you go to Johnny. All three of them are singing the same parts, but they sound incredibly different. Um, I, I know that you have some very, very strong opinions on this whole scrutiny, um, because as someone who I would argue you've gone through it more than just about any base out there. And I personally don't understand this. Um, your video that I I don't know if you'll remember your, your video where you did the Tchaikovsky ending, the Alexander or E flat one. Yeah, man, that sounded, that sounded like an organ. Like you sound like if someone goes, like and just punch yeah. that button. Uh, what do they call the that? Cleanest. The pedal tone or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like that's probably the cleanest E flat one I've ever heard. And then Thank you yeah. start looking at comments, and like there's just some ugly comments. And yeah. I kind of just want to pick your brain apart of why, why this happens, I guess, and kind of how you feel. Maybe as the base community, we can move forward from this because I, I think we yeah. should be uplifting everybody. You know, I, I totally get it. And, and this is really um, exciting for me because, you know, after a while, that stuff wears, I think, on anybody. I don't care how thick you're, you know, you can have hide like a rhinoceros and, you know, <laughs> sooner or later, it's going to work its way in. Um, so you're probably familiar with when I was not only doing the basement, but I started the challenge series, you know, and I'd have yes. these different vocal challenges. And, um, in retrospect, I can see some people felt that that was kind of arrogant on my part, that I was bragging, and it was never that. I'll tell you how the challenge series um, really came to be. I got tired of the endless scrutiny. Oh, Spriggs is just frying. That's not, you know, that doesn't count. That's not legit on, you know, take your pick. And I'm like, okay, well, in the Olympics, they have games. I mean, in whatever else, you know, there's displays. So why don't we do it here? If you can go down to an F, my view is whether you're using subharmonics, if you're one of the rare few freaks of nature that can do it in chest voice or modal voice, if you're using strobos, um, throat singing, whatever, here's a little newsflash. You can't fake these notes. You can either hit them or you can't hear them, hit them. And typically, um, in my experience, the ones that are real critical of this are the ones who cannot do it, okay? And so I think that there's some some insecurity there. I mean, I'll be really honest. When I hear a bass singer do something that I can't do or do something better than I can do, I'm like, Man, that's awesome, honey. You know, I'll tell my wife, look at this. I, right, I can't do right. it. And, it, and if anything, it, it like um it motivates me to try to do better, but I don't view it as let's face it, I didn't win the lottery as far as voices. And what I mean by that, like when you sit down with Glenn Miller, you know, I I, I was fortunate to have uh, lunch and dinner with him a couple of times. You hear this just incredible voice that even in a noisy restaurant, I mean, it's just cutting through and knocking your head off. And, you yeah, know, he's just, yeah. And I mean, like uh, John Ames, um, some of the other incredible profundos that are just, you know, they're just, I mean, I mean this in the best way, but like you're, they're, they're freaks. Yeah. Um, 
I'm more of a product of someone. Um, yes, I have a low voice, but I really learned how to work that extension and get very comfortable with it. And it's been a lot of a lot of um, a lot of time and a lot of effort um, in in exploring that. You know, when you go after someone's voice, um, that's a very personal type of thing. I mean, your, your voice is part of who you are. And so in many ways, I can't think of, of um, much of a bigger insult than, than you know, to, to really attack someone over their voice. And it would be great if we could get beyond that. And instead of criticizing others, I think celebrating and uplifting people if they have techniques, you know, let me give you an example, Xander the Octavist. So you're I was just about to bring him up. Oh, okay. Sorry to me. But you know, there's an example of, of a Dynamite comes in small packages. You know, um, I don't care what the technique is and I don't care what anyone says. You go ahead and stand there like that young man is in a large choir and hold him up with a D2 or C2, B flat, whatever he's going down to with a full sound. Yeah. I mean, cool. I mean that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, I was very, very blessed to, uh, to get to sing the Bogoro Dice Diego. I'm sure you've heard of that's one of the one of the Vespers. Yeah. yeah. Um and you know that one Glenn Miller in my opinion has the uh the best like recording of that cuz he actually goes down to the F1. Yeah. Um and that was the first time that I ever got to try using an extended technique in a choir. Right. And you know and you know what I learned? If you can do it, do it. Like it shouldn't it's it's like if you can make it sound good and it's not overpowering everything, like it's not, it's not muddying anything up. If you can do it with confidence and, and it blends well and it sounds good. Why should I care how you're doing it? See, we think we are so aligned in our thinking. Here's my thing from my limited understanding. There are four registers to the human voice. Mm -hmm. uh, the top would be the whistle tone, which that's not accessible to me. I, I can't do that. Then we have ooh, falsetto, right? Mm -hmm. Then we have modal voice or what they, their precious chest voice. Ah. <sighs> then if you want to go further, la, 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 la. okay, you have vocal fry or the pulse registers, I call it. Mm -hmm. Within that, though, we're finding there is kind of a gray line, a gray area, subharmonics, strobos that I've perfected. And, and my, my guess is that several before me who did it way better than I, um, you know, in Russian choral music, other things. Let's face it, we only have so much material here. So, yeah. you know, after a while, I mean, despite all these insane claims of like, you know, what is it, the 15 year old on YouTube that has a C minus four or whatever already, you know, um, yeah, I'm like, ah. <laughs> but, you know, you can only go so far. Um, now, some of it's a bit goofy. I mean, when I hear people um, not to name names, but when I hear people getting uh, records for many octaves off the piano, um, yeah, you can maybe make noise although it wouldn't be um perceptible to us i guess elements as i'm told at that point <laughs> yeah i mean but you know so i don't mean to contradict myself i think that you do have to draw a line somewhere but look if if it's musical what why would you discard an entire register if it's accessible and it, i mean if you can do it and make it sound good why why wouldn't you want to use that I I don't know either because like I will say with my voice I was a fairly late bloomer. You talked about being very young when your voice dropped. Yeah. I was maybe eighteen, nineteen. Oh really? When, wow. Yeah, I was a I was a high tenor. Like I I sang tenor in high school, and even yeah. when I when I got into college, I was originally a tenor too. And yeah. then I come back, and I sound like this. Um, yeah. And it, it's. And then I, I started diving into the different registers, you know, vocal fry, chest fry, mi mixing everything. And I mean, like, two years ago, I couldn't just be like, wah. I couldn't <laughs> just make that note, you know, but it's it's working your way towards that. Um, yep. But I, I, I don't, I just, I've never understood the point. It's like, if if, if something sounds good and it works, 
who are you to tell me that I can't do that or that it's it's fake or whatever? Well, let let me hear you do it. That's exactly it. And that 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 was my whole point. And I think also getting away from calling it a trick or a parlor trick and recognizing no, it's actually a skill. Mm-hmm. You know, think of this. I mean, it occurred to me, Buddhism, I don't know how many practitioners there are. I mean, I'm sure hundreds of millions. Um, yeah. you know, they've been doing those chants for how long? So are you telling me that, that what they do is not legit? I think it's beautiful what they do, you know? So I who agree. am I to criticize? You know, j- just because you're not doing it in your precious modal voice or whatever, that in no way, um, that, that in no way delegitimizes it whatsoever in my view. Exactly. In, in my opinion, it's like saying, it's like when girls say they have to have a guy that's over 6'5". I'm like, you realize <laughs> how many people are actually 6'5"? Yeah. Like, I'm I'm, I'm about 6'3", and I'm still right. taller than, than most people. And yeah. it's like, if you're wanting someone who can do that in, in, like you said, your precious modal voice, you have slimmed your pickings so much. Like, um, I mean, you're not going to go, not every choir is going to have a Glenn Miller or an even an Eric Holloway. Um, like, by the way, I was like, Eric Holloway, I think has the darkest voice that I've ever heard in my life. And even yeah. he is out there encouraging young basses and young singers. So I'm like, these guys who are at the cream of the crop, like the top of their their fields, how come they can go out there and encourage us young guys? But these kids are out here crapping on people like you when they haven't even sniffed a B flat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's, but I think again, I have tried to, pull back a little bit you know i used to i got to the point where i'm gonna be like okay you want to you know and now it's yeah. like this is an opportunity now a lot of times that doesn't work because if they're dug in they're going to criticize I mean, i've seen you know it's weird i mean i think sometimes people with really low self-esteem i mean you know you said you're six three you're 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 a big guy let's face it i doubt people would just come and get right up in your face like in person <laughs> but yeah probably you know not. on social media it creates some some internet um, warriors, if you will. And I think that, you know, also in, in my dealing with people, finding a more diplomatic way and trying to um, understand, you know, not everyone is is at the same point in their in, in their journey. And what I mean by that, you know, they're maturing, they're still learning some things. Um, so, you know, as long as the behavior is just not outright crass and offensive, which unfortunately a lot of the times it is. And for yeah. that, I don't really know what the answer is um, because until we get past this, this point of, you know, only a profundo is a real base, no one else counts and extensions don't count and all that, you know, that's, that is crazy. And I, I say that because some of the profundos that I know, you know, and it, it isn't just notes that you hit. I mean, it, it's, it's, timbre and a lot more goes into it than what people think i mean i was ignorant of this years ago um i would not call my voice a profundo i guess i could be on on the line maybe but um you know i think i'm a i'm a bass with a really low extension if you will um but i have seen many profundos um those that i know anyway about a g or an f sharp one is where they hit rock bottom it it stops now, there are several people, I mean, you've seen them on these different apps, kids that are 15 years old that have mastered subharmonics, they can hit an E1 that'll just blow you right out of the room. Yeah. So how, how does that not count? You know, that's my question. It's just, it doesn't matter. How, get there however you get there if it sounds good. I couldn't, couldn't have said that better myself, to be honest. Like, I, I um, you remember there was this guy on YouTube for a while, his name is Clap It Up Dan. Yeah, I sure yeah, I did a I actually did a uh collab with uh with Dan. Um the after a while, right? Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah. Yep. Um well that that was one of the things like I remember looking at some of like his videos. By the way, very talented. I mean that that kid has mastered the subharmonics and the growl as well as technique. Anybody. 
It's incredible. Like, um, but you look at some of his comments, like of people, and they're like, "Ah, uh, he's not. He's not really hitting those. He's pitching them down." I'm like, "Why can't it? Why is it so hard to fathom that somebody who's young can learn a technique?" and do it very well like don't isn't that what we all do like we all pick up skills whether it's singing engineering whatever you pick up skills through your life why is it so far-fetched that somebody could have learned this so well that it seems so natural well look at it this way and i mean this is bad to say but if you're 60 70 years old whatever and you've hung on to the fact that you can hit a g or an f sharp one you know and you can just scrape right down to that. And then all of a sudden some young kid comes along that can hit a C1 basically any time because he can do subharmonics with strobe boss. I guess it rubs you wrong. And that's unfortunate because for me, you know, I'm at the point in my life, my, my, my big thing other than it's just fun and I enjoy, you know, expressing yeah. myself. But the reason that I'm that I'm hanging in there, because, you know, as I've shared, my, my vision's not the greatest now. I mean, it, it, <laughs> as you saw with me trying to get this app going, it took me a, a little while. So I know just enough to be dangerous. But um, my biggest reason for wanting to stick in here is I really like seeing the 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 young kids coming up and, and, and doing their thing, like I was saying with Xander and other people. And if I can encourage people uh, and and learn from them, but also teach teach something then, you know, that that's a real pleasure to me. And, uh, you know, I, I know that you and, and several others are going to go far past anything that I have done. And um, that really, um, that gives me a lot of a lot of joy to see. Well, well I appreciate those, those kind words. We, uh, I just want this base community to understand, like, we're all here for each other. Like, our voice type is not normal. Like right. that's what, I mean, we, we talk about like true tenors, true, this finding true bases is a very hard thing to come by. Um, to comment on your, you, what you said earlier, um, obviously I would consider you an octavist, um, yeah. because I don't, I don't know of anybody who like could project those types of notes over a choir setting like you could there. I mean, there's only a handful of, of people that I would put in that similar category. Um, yeah. But I do understand where you're coming from because I, I've, I've got to see Glenn in person and just yeah. hearing him speak, like, you know, you're in the presence of something truly incredible. Um, and I, uh, I, I don't know, like, but I would, I would a hundred percent consider you in the same league as as Eric Holloway and Glenn Miller and John oh, Ames. Well, um, you're you're very very kind. You know, I don't I don't sing with a choir now. A lot. Um, I'm actually considering uh, joining a, a choir here. Um, there's going to be an opportunity, and I'm I'm thinking about doing it. Um, uh, number one, because I just I think I'd enjoy it a lot. Hopefully, my vision would would yeah. allow me to do that. Um, but there's a small part of me, I guess, that would say, well, maybe the naysayers won't. You know, when I when I drop an F1 or something over the choir, then maybe, maybe it'll finally count. Um, but, you know, I, I think something that people don't realize, I mean, of course, we didn't have cell phones and, and recording the, the way, but right. back, you know, 30 years ago, even when I was, you know, my teens, I was octaving in the, in the church choir there. Um, I had accessible um, B flat ones and A ones by the time I was 15. Now they weren't the kind of real big, robust, you know, sounds. Now they're kind of a, uh, you know, abrupt, but I could do them. Um, occasionally there was one performance I actually hit F sharp one and I was probably 17 years old. So, you know, I, I was doing that stuff. Um, but I had a good reliable, I'd say B flat a one, um, even in my, in my early teens. So that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, like just i mean but but again it, it brings back to the point of like this that type of voice is not common and so in oh. my opinion we should be embracing someone who can do something like that because i, I at least for me it's like uh i understand that those notes are not easy to hit um yeah. Yeah, and 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 like it, it's one of those things, you know. Maybe it's Maybelline because you're born with it. Because you you can't 
your chest range or your modal voice is only going to be set so low because of genetics, how your your vocal right. cords are. Um, so I just I've, I've never understood why we have to sit here and scrutinize people just because we can't do something. I know that's a human nature thing. Yeah. Um, but it, it I, don't, I don't know. Like I, every time I hear you or 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 Eric or one of those guys, like I just it's amazement. It's not envy. It's not it's not anger. It's holy crap. Like that's it. That's amazing that somebody well, can do that. Well, thank you. You know, I feel that way a lot of the times when I hear various talents on on TikTok and you know um i don't i mean a, a lot of times i'm just in awe and i'm like you know there's certain things i'm like i can't do that that and and it doesn't bother me it's like wow that's really cool um and i think as you say you know i, I don't mean to keep repeating myself but i think if we could celebrate i mean you know wouldn't it be boring if we all sounded alike like as much as i like the voices you're mentioning like take glenn miller I wouldn't want everyone to sound like Glenn. I mean, it would be a pretty boring choir, wouldn't it? I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, so there's, there's different, I mean, it's kind of like a, a really good dish that you like, you know, you, you need different flavors and with the voices, you know, how this probably won't be a good example, but take the two Millers, Vladimir Miller, Glenn Miller. Yeah. Who's better? That's a pretty subjective view. Yeah, it's... You know, both are just, incredible probably arguably the greatest bases of our time um very different voices very very yeah. different voices um i love them both you know so um i think that and i think going back to you know all this talk about chest voice and modal voice but take someone like i was saying like xander who i don't know his lowest modal voice little no note is i don't know but What's it matter? I mean, I hear him go down to the first octave and it's huge. It sounds yeah. great. So to me, great. Yeah. I mean, I like, I, I remember first uh, learning about Xander and I was like, how is he doing that? Like, yeah. it just, it's this massive, like you said, you know, big dynamite in a small package because he just. <laughs> Like I know people who are seven foot tall who can't make a sound that large, yeah. Um, and it, it's incredible. And I and I I really love his channel because it's showing that extended techniques have a place in choir. Totally, totally. In fact, I would argue we have we have made the bass voice even more rare. And what I mean by that is when you have teachers and other commenters that are not as positive. And by the way, most of the teachers that I see are very positive and very encouraging. I'm sure you see the different ones on TikTok. But every now and then you'll you'll have the ones that, well, you're not a really a bass. You know, that they're just too rare. You know, it, I mean, a profundo is like, you know, or a bass or, or whatever. That's one in a billion or whatever. And it's like, no, no, they're, they're, they're right here. There's several. There's different varieties. Um, but there are several out here. And... Again, I think that we should be fostering these extension techniques because that's how people are going to access those. And I think that that's how choir is going to sound a lot better, yeah. quite frankly. Like you say, I mean, how many people, truthfully, I mean, I know there's all these folks that they have a chest C1 or whatever, but how many people can truly hit like an F1 in modal voice? Very few <laughs> I mean, very, very few. Yeah, I mean, like, there's, I mean, a handful of of people that can. I mean, and and like, uh, there, I'm going to a comment that you said in in our our talking on on Facebook that once a voice gets to F1, it's really hard to tell at that point what you're going into. So oftentimes, I will say my head goes to that mm, when someone's like, "Well, I've got a chest." E flat one. I'm like, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of doubt it. Um, yeah. Not saying it's impossible because obviously there are people who have done it and people who can do it. But it, it's there's so many there's so many people that hit a note once, and they're like, oh, it's part of my vocal range. I would disagree because I would I would consider your vocal range to be something you can do every day, right? Like, um, 
and and that's not a knock on people. I mean, there are definitely notes that I hit on on certain days that I can't hit every day. Like it's not every Me day too. I have a chest G one. Yeah. Um. But last week I I, I had it. I just just had it. Um. And it's. I think that's okay because we are humans. There are conditions that are put on our vocal cords. The weather outside's different every day. You drink different amounts of water every day. You eat different things. Your voice is going to be kind of different a little every day. Absolutely. Um, but but I mean to kind of uh, I had some other some questions from some of my followers um, for you. Um, Go first for of it. all, is how even with this the the scrutiny you've gone through, what continues to push you to want to put this kind of content? Um, like your your singing content or even these kind of interviews to help younger yeah. basses um what keeps that drive for you yeah so um for me um i've said more than once i am my own experiment you know um i i don't mean to ever sound like i'm bragging or anything but to my knowledge um there's a lot of talk but to my knowledge um tuka hapanemi who by the way i believe is one of the most incredible bases of all time. Yeah, won't argue on that one. My favorite, hands down, by the way. Tuka, I love you. <laughs> um, so other than Tuka, Hapanemi, and myself, I know of no one that was getting down to these pitches publicly. Okay, right. I'm talking like the crazy stuff, like E0 down yeah. to C0, B minus 1, where at that point... It's just turning into, I don't even know what I'm hearing anymore. You know, that kind of stuff. Right. But there was a lot of talk. But to my knowledge, again, no one was really getting down to that. Doesn't mean anything, not really. But um, it's an experiment. And um, so part of it, I like to I like to explore my voice and have fun with it. See what works, see what doesn't. Um, the other thing is that I really, really enjoy, as I was saying earlier, um, seeing seeing the young talent like yourself, Xander, um, the Wellerman, all these different people that, um, you know, are already blowing me away in, in, in many ways. And it, it's exciting in no way is it intimidating. You know, it's, it's, um, it's just really rewarding to, to see that. I think that we could be on the cusp of uh, basically a renaissance within bass singing. And the reason I say that is we have so much just like this technology now. Back when I was a kid, when you would travel many states to go see London, Paris, or J.D. Sumner, yeah. or George Johns, you know, and, and get to see him, that was great. But everything was was word of mouth or, or in writing, you know. We didn't have this kind of stuff. So we have so much more knowledge available to us that I think that's why we're seeing people master these, like you're saying, clap it up, damn, with subharmonics. The kid's doing it better probably than anyone else ever has. I mean, I'd put him up there like with Ken yeah. Turner level. So yeah, I um, um I it, it was it was um, yeah. I remember the first time I ever heard one of his videos. I think it was the uh, just a little talk with Jesus or something like that. Yeah. And he yeah. just started shredding that first <laughs> octave. I know. I was like, holy moly. And then he did a growl to like a G sharp zero or something. Yeah, he's crazy. Really, really good. Um, kind of using that to segue into this next question is um, with all the, the, we, there seemed to be like a renaissance of acapella music within the last like decade. Um, probably, you know, with Pitch Perfect um, coming out, that really kind of opened up the world. How, as someone who is kind of, known for being able to project these notes so loud how do you feel about basses on mics like tim faust avi kaplan uh jeff castellucci those kinds of guys like does that to you does that make him any less of a bass because they're on a microphone no no in no way does it um number one it puts food on their table um you know criticize them all you want um not you but i mean those that want right. to I got news. Um, some of them are doing rather well. They probably drive a nicer car than I do. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think that um, I think it would be a reality check. Part of 
I'm thinking here because I don't want to get too far in left field, but you were mentioning the basement right. earlier. One of my disappointments was that was that was something I was hopeful that I could bring different genres like acapella, southern gospel, um, you know, classical, whatever, and have them be like, wow, that's really great. You do. Unfortunately, you see there's there's a, a tribal mindset at times where, oh, you use a microphone. Therefore, you're not legit. Or, oh, well, he's just growling. That's how he's so low. He couldn't hit it smooth into a mic, you see. And so to me, um, there is, are, are you still with me? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, sorry. There was a delay there. Um, to me, there's this really odd, almost like we're saying the negativity of, of some of the commenters. There's also this way of, of looking down on different genres or, or other ways to do it. And I would argue this to, to answer the question about mic singing. If you think it's that easy. Um, and you know, like with Tim storms and me, no, no love lost there. However, right, right. however, I applaud what he and, and Paul David Kenham and others, you know, they sound really great in what they do. And I yeah. really, I really respect their talent. You know, I, I think it's great. Um, not for me, but, you know, I, I, I really appreciate what they do. If you think it's that easy, go ahead and pick up a microphone and sound like Tim Riley or George Yance or see, it doesn't work. If anything, amplification at times can expose problems. In other words, if I'm in a really good room and I'm gaming the room, if you will, I've got great placement. I can make these thunderous sounds. If I have ampli amplification right there, it doesn't sound so great maybe sometimes. So I'm not working the overtones and other things of that nature, if that makes sense. Um, and and one of my buddies, Richard Harris, you know, Rich, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, I know um, Richard. You know, Rich, Rich sings in a quartet with with a microphone. And, um, you know, he, he he's done other things, too, on mic. But um, I've heard Rich go down to like an E or D1 and, and put vibrato on the thing. And that sound quite good and heavy. So, um I don't know how someone's going to say that's not legit. Well, and, and, yeah, because I mean, like, I'll use Tim Falson as, as an example because I, I've gone to see him live a few times. Yeah. Um, that dude shakes a building. Sure. I mean, it, it's it's insane. And, you know, everyone's going to be like, oh, well, he's EQ'd all the way up. Oh, okay. Um, he's still touring 80% of the year. Like, he's he's traveled the world. Like people know who he is and people pay money to come see him. So why, why do you feel the need to go and say like, Oh, well, he's not as good as like a Glenn Miller because he doesn't do it over a choir. No, but he's still doing things that Glenn Miller can't do. Like, totally. I mean, as you know, I love Glenn. I think it's amazing. I don't think that I would really care to hear Glenn attempt that. Not that he would care to, but yeah, it's different. So how is one better than the other? It's different. Yes, it's very different. Like, I mean, even just between you and myself, there's a difference in, in our voices. Yeah. We are both bases. Yep. And, and we both have certain things that we do uh, that make us sound good. And I don't think that that should be a knock on either one of us because we're just different voices. It's a personal thing. Absolutely. Um, next question. Uh, you talked about Strobos. Um, a lot of a lot of bases may not know too much about the Strobos. So would uh, if you can kind of give just kind of a description um, and then maybe a little bit of your journey to finding that. Sure, sure. So what I'll do is I will give my um, understanding of it and my definition, if you, I know I don't get to make up my own facts and terms, but um, if you look up Strobos, like if you just Google that, you're going to, it's probably just going to lead you into vocal fry or pulse register. Yeah. Um, I have a different take on that. Um, so when I first started listening to Southern gospel music and I really got into that because it's my voice dropped Right. I would hear George Johns get down to like say an, an F yeah. and it sounded amazing, but I could tell that the timbre of it was just slightly different. You know, it was kind of, instead of 
get you some satisfaction in the age, you go lower techniques. Well, it gets breathy. You know, you, you bottom out. So it's ba 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 ba. You know, you start running out of room. Well, his would be like ba ba ba. You know, it, it stayed connected and full, if yeah. you will. And I couldn't figure that out. Well, I started playing with with that sound. And that's what I believe, um, not only his, but you hear the saying Russian strobos, even though I think it's technically a German term. Yeah. So once the voice gets down to a point, you're going to have to shift gears. Yeah. And I believe that there's actually a mix that happens a little bit higher than what people think. Um, I, I can't prove this. I guess I could get scoped or something and, and we could see. But I believe that a mix, by mix I mean where modal voice and where the pulse register start to do this. Now, for a long time, we were told, I mean, I had several uh, different people, I mean, vocal pedagogy teachers say that, no, the registers can't be combined. We found that that's not exactly right. I mean, subharmonics is combining modal voice and yeah. pulse. Strobos the same way. My guess is that with Strobos, like what I do, I think it's the close cousin to subharmonics. However, I think here's the main difference. With subharmonics, the person is, I, I understand it as I don't do subharmonics, but I understand it that they're like an octave above or a fifth above, take your pick, and then vocal fry comes in, mm -hmm. and then it produces that monstrous sound. Stroll boss is a little bit different. I view it much more supported, and you're down on the actual fundamental and you're blending mm -hmm. in, you're blending impulse. Does that does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'm um, explaining it clearly or not. Well, it's funny because you explain it now. I'm I'm kind of looking back at moments where I'm like, I think that's what I was doing. Yeah. Um. So that actually clarified a lot. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, that that's fantastic because I've I've heard Strobos before, um. But you know, it's one of those things like you look up this, the generic definitions doesn't really help. Um, so having someone like yourself who is, has kind of mastered that technique is nice to kind of yeah. actually talk with you about that. Um, Cause I yeah. think it's one of those things that I think more bases should understand. Um, like being able to do that. Um, Cause I mean, then it unlocks so much more than, than if you were just trying to just, do that with your modal voice like we all we all wish that we could do c1 modals all the time like that would be <laughs> awesome it but be. it's just not it's not one of those things that's going to happen um, no. and so having those that that strobos or the, the any extended technique i think is i think it's coming kind of standard i think you have to know these things nowadays to be considered like any type of decent <laughs> anymore <laughs> There's no doubt about it. And again, um, there's so much, you know, my most common question asked is what's your lowest chest note? You know, what's your lowest note? Yeah. And I'm like, I, it gets to a point where I don't even know anymore. And I'm not yeah. trying to be dishonest. It's just <clears throat> things start to mix there. And there's times where I think I have a real convincing like D1 or C1, but you know, you're getting to a point there. I, it kind of strains uh, credulity to think that you know the, the vocal cords are working the same you know you've only got so much material there yeah and so i believe that a mix starts quite a bit higher typically for me um around a, a g or an f is where i really start going into a heavy mix to get more volume right okay yeah i i uh, obviously a lot of my followers were like what what you ask him what his lowest note is and i'm like i am not going to do that because i yeah. we've talked about this before um all i know is that you swallowed a tuba at some point when you were growing up like i for, for those of y'all who don't know like i am a tuba player primarily yeah. by trade voice is my secondary um my secondary deal and this man can go lower than my dang tuba. Like I can, I, I mean, my lowest note that I've ever hit on a tuba was an F zero. And I'm pretty sure you've gone to what, yeah. like a B negative one. Like what they found. Yeah, I got, I got down to the, yeah, it was analyzed down to that weird stuff. But you know, at that point, 
is it musical? No. I mean, it's it's fun right. to maybe say, but I don't I don't really count it. So it's noise. Yeah. Um. So, but uh, <laughs> kind of kind of one of the the kind of to wrap this up here. Um. Do you have any words of encouragement for uh for these bases coming up? Like if they start facing the kind of scrutiny, you know, I had, I had mentioned a moment that I had kind of gotten some ugly comments and you really yeah. helped me kind of feel better about that. So if you could just kind of give some uh, general uh, encouragement to these guys about, you know, facing this kind of stuff. Yeah. A few things. Number one, if they're that focused on you, you're probably doing something right, not something wrong. You know, like if you hear someone really bad, you know, typically you just say nothing at all. So if they're that focused, mm -hmm. there's a reason for that. The other is um, try to understand that where that criticism is coming from, that person is probably in a pretty dark place in their own journey um, to feel the need to, to go for the jugular like that over something is, you know, we're talking low notes here. <laughs> we're not talking, yeah. you know, like politics or monetary policy or war or anything. We're talking low notes here. Um, and, you know, I, I just look back to the encouragers like, um, you know, when I was growing up, Tim Riley and George Yance, it's not like they kept things secret. You know, if there was any information yeah. or knowledge, they were more than happy to share it with me. And in my office, the other room there, um, my probably my most prized possession, believe it or not, is, is a, uh, a letter written to me um, from George. Oh. And in it, yeah, you know, it's, it's just, it's priceless to me. And it, he, he says, you know, remember hitting low notes isn't the most important part of being a bass singing from the heart, you know, so sing from the heart. So it's an important part of, of who we are and, and how we express ourselves, whatever that genre is. And I would say, don't get caught up in, in all the, all the negativity, even though it's really easy to do, but also focus on the other thing that George told me, I walked up to him and I've seen this in an interview too, but, um, Sorry, this just popped in my head. Um, I walked up to him one time, and I was probably 14 or 15 years old, and I, I croaked out like an A-flat. You know, it didn't sound very good, but I was proud I could hit it. He said, don't focus on the low notes like that. Be a singer. Learn how to sing, and the low notes will come. And I've seen him in, in interview after interview, and I've talked with, with other people that said, almost verbatim me, he said the same thing to them be a singer and if you listen to him that man had the most beautiful voice um gorgeous voice and the low notes followed so you know a lot of people think that all i do is just growl out these crazy low notes they don't understand no i've, I've got a pretty decent high end i mean you know f4 g4 happens sometimes not a lot sounds kind of strained but i can do it um, and there's an inverse relationship there, by the way, the more yes. that you work the upper register, the better your low end. That's something I think is kind of important. I'm glad that I, that I brought that up. Um, people will think, oh, don't go past middle C or just focus on this or, you know, smoke three packs or whatever. It takes. No, take care of your instrument and focus on that upper register. And you will see there is an inverse relationship between the, your highs and your lows. I completely agree because it wasn't until I started working my upper chest range, my upper mind, and then the mixed voices yeah. that the lows started just coming out. And, and I, I'm, I, I'm also glad you brought that up because, first of all, huge fan of George. Um, re rest in peace. You know, he, he's yeah. a legend, a legend. Um, one of the best that's ever done it, in my opinion. Um, yeah, agree. And and I love that he always his opinion on that never changed was be a good singer. Don't worry about being a good bass, because if you're a good singer, the good bass will come. That's right. And I, I, I love that. Um, well, uh, first, uh, again, thank you for this interview, Matt. Uh, this has been a, an honor, a pleasure. Um, uh, hopefully we can you know continue to keep in touch. I would love to continue to learn and from you and your friendship means the world to me. Um, just uh, this is more the, the we'll cut the interview. Um, 
but just for 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 me personally uh do you have just any words of encouragement for me because you've heard my stuff before um and things that maybe you think that i should lean towards this direction or, or whatever um just love to hear kind of what your thoughts on my voice because it is something that i i think about quite a lot I'm very self oh yeah about it yeah well i think that you i think that you're really your sound continues to grow and improve, um, especially from the first time that I heard you. Um, you know, you sounded more like when I first, you know, started doing stuff. It was, it was kind of muffled and held back. It's not that way anymore. You know, you got to be loud and proud, and you've got a really good. I think that you would have a great. I mean, I can't, you know, plan your chapters for you, but I think that. Um, I think that you're going to have a really good promising future if you decide to do choral work or acapella. I mean, I think that you're really going to have a good, um, you know, maybe you're going to want to do more solo stuff. I don't know, but I think you've got a lot of options. You have a lovely voice. I think the other thing that's really cool is since you have such an intimate knowledge of the tuba, you play that, your, your thinking is, is more in those low fundamental notes, if that makes sense. And you're going to know how yeah. to do some really cool things with your voice that I think the average bear won't because they're not used to just doing that type of repertoire. And um, so I think that, I think I'm going to be staying tuned. It's going to be very interesting to see your journey. Cause you're, um, you're a young guy. I've, I've got uh, blue jeans older than you. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so uh, you know, it, it's going to be really, really interesting to, to hear you as you, as you continue to grow into your wonderful voice. Well, thank you, Matt. I, I, I very much appreciate that. I mean, there's a lot coming from you. <laughs> um and I'll, I'll give i'll give some encouragement back um nobody can tell you that you are are faking this or anything because man you are you are a gift like from <laughs> like god blessed you with with a very wonderful voice and i've loved following you since you kind of got back on social media um i i I love seeing your content yeah, and you, the fact that you're so humble about it makes me love it even more because I, oh. I don't like egos. Um, and I think you're just a very, you're a wonderful guy. Like singing aside, you're just a very nice guy. Um, Thank you. But also, um, yeah, your voice, your voice is unreal. Like I, I can say that until I'm blue in the face. Um, <laughs> like just your control of your notes is so is so good and and yeah. in my opinion you are the lowest voice in the world um oh, tim you. tim's uh tim's record's cool and then tim is a phenomenal talent um but i just don't i can't think of anybody who's doing what you're doing so i just don't let them get you down because i would be very sad to see your content going away well, thank you. I, I, that means a lot, Jacob. I, I really appreciate it. You're, uh, you're very kind, and uh, I plan on being here for, for a long time and, and hearing all you guys uh, do great things. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, I'll be getting you some music very soon. Um, I decided that I really want to do just a closer walk with you oh. uh, cranking out some of them low bass notes. Yeah. Um, so I'll be, I'll be sending you some music and some recordings uh, here within the next couple of weeks, uh, I got to finalize right. some things, but uh, I just, I'm excited to get the opportunity to work with you. And uh, hopefully we, hopefully this interview will bring some light to people and maybe let us appreciate each other's voices a little bit more. Absolutely. Absolutely. I look forward to it. I'll be on the lookout. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Matt. Yeah. Just, uh, just one more time before we end. Uh, thank you so much again for this interview. Thank you for taking the time to, uh, to talk about these things. These were just things that I felt like we needed to cover. Um, Cause I'm tired of seeing everybody getting, getting angry about who can sing what in modal voice. Just sing people, just sing, enjoy your Absolutely. voice. We all have Absolutely. a different one. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate the opportunity and I, you know, I, I hope it was what you were looking for. I've, I've had a good time talking with you, Jake. I really have. Me too. It's been, been everything I could have expected and then some. Great. Great. All right. Thank you, buddy. Of course. You have a good one. Okay. Please, my God, I can go this day.